Hey guys, Django here. Welcome to American Air Force's Rank 2 Overview and Guide. You know the drill by now. In this episode, I will take you through Rank 2 American Airplanes. We'll be going through all the planes, all the strengths, the weaknesses, the flight styles. We'll show you the hangar. I'll show you in-game footage. And I'll give you my tips and my advice on which way to grind, what is the fastest for fighter pilots, bomber pilots and all that jazz and uh, everything I know along the way you will know as well hopefully and hopefully that will help you as a source of information to grind faster and to increase your knowledge of these planes. Now do give the video a thumbs up if, if you enjoyed the video along the way. Do leave me a comment that really helps out the search results and the engagement the video gets. Also, I would like to ask you to join me on my Locals and my Rumble. On Locals, you can also financially support me and I will share non-War Thunder related stuff there as well. Now, without further ado, let's go into the guide for Rank 2 American Aircraft. I hope you enjoy. So rank 2 America, let's start the show off with the P400. The P400 has a 2.0 beta rating and sits right here at the beginning of the first main fighter line. Fantastic beta rating for this plane. She looks awesome and she does have a quite a bit of armor protection, which is nice for some extra survivability. Uh, we have the X-ray here, we have the smaller calibers in the tips of the wings with a thousand rounds per gun. Really doesn't help the roll rate there. But that is good. We have here the 50 cals and the 20 millimeter. Only 60 rounds in the 20 millimeters, but there's that. We have the engine here. Not the greatest engine, she's a little bit underpowered. Self-sealing fuel tanks right there. All in all, a plane that is quite interesting with its setup. Not the average plane. We have one 500 kilogram bomb that you can equip and that is it for bomb loads. So there is that, the P400, let's have a look at her. So here we are, the P400, what a magnificent plane, especially at its new battle rating at 2.0, where it has recently been moved to, 2.0 battle rating is fantastic. This is the first fighter in the first main fighter line for the Americans, and it sits at 2.0 battle rating, which is a treat. What are the strengths in this P400? The offensive guns, it runs with a 20 millimeter in the nose combined with two 50 cals all under the cowling and then it has four uh, smaller calibers in the wings so you're running with seven guns uh, this is a great firepower at a 2.0 battle rating it is enough to smash anything you'll face into smithereens now the speed in this plane is also fantastic it is very fast this plane especially at 2.0 battle rating you will be a jet like in down tiers and at its own battle rating and in up tiers you can still hold your own so that is all quite good and fantastic Durability in this plane is also good, it can take quite a bit of damage and that adds to your survivability. You can take quite a few hits and that is nice to have. The weaknesses in this plane, it does roll off center unfortunately and in the lower ends of your dive when it does pull off center, usually caused by the rudder by the way, but you, uh, when you have to adjust for a target that moves, you will pull the nose off the target and that can throw your aim off and, and make you miss the target. So that is a downside. The maneuverability overall in this plane is not great. It is a pure boom and zoomer and you have to watch that. Um, you don't want to get into a turn fight basically. And if you do, you do have to have the clear advantage. The climb rate in this plane is not great either. Uh, you need to take quite a bit of time to side climb to get this plane into the position that it needs to dominate. Overheating in this plane is also an issue, she does overheat and you do have to watch the web, especially in the beginning uh, uh, so that you don't overheat it too much. Uh, you give, your, give yourself a little bit of time after the climb to uh, take the overheating down a little bit and then uh, go clean into the, into the merge with the enemy team. The flight style in this plane is boom and zooming. You need to have a strict boom and zoom style in this plane because you cannot really turn. And it's not great as, as an energy fighter. I am energy fighting a Yak-1 here, but I did hit him in the first encounter and I damaged his engine. 
and that's why I can uh, keep up with this guy, but otherwise I would have lost against the Yak-1 in an energy fight at this altitude. Is this playing competitive though? Yes he is, with the firepower and the speed this plane is fantastic in down tiers and at its own battle rating. It's a little bit more tough at uh, up tiers, but she can hold her own there. What is the fun factor in this plane? Do, do you enjoy it? I would say I give this plane a medium rating for fun factor. She can only do boom and zooming, it is not much of a versatile plane, you cannot transition between the rolls very well, so the, the fun is, it's alright. Do I recommend this plane? How high do I value it? I would say I give this plane a medium recommendation. Even with a 2.0 battle rating, there are so many better planes in rank 2 America. It's a very rich line uh, in all the different lines that this line has to offer, this rank. It is a great plane to start with, 2.0. You might start with it a little bit and, and have some fun in it, but you quickly leave this plane behind. So a medium recommendation for this plane. After the P400, we are looking at the P39s, Aero Cobras, the NO and the Q5 are the two that we have. They sit right here in the tree, P400. Here we go for the Aero Cobras. 2.7 and 3.0 battle ratings for these planes. They are quite similar to the P400, of course. They have also some armor protection here, which is nice for extra survivability. Now with this one you see the same exact setup with the smaller calibers, 50 calibers in the nose and the 20 millimeter. We have the engine here which is a better engine, so better performance which is a nice thing to have in this plane. And we do have some rockets added to this one with next to the 500 kilogram bomb. There is some other differences between these two that we'll go into in the review. Now let's have a look at them. Ah, we're looking at the Aero Cobras. These planes are fantastic and very good for their battle rating. We have two of them, the NO and the Q5 sitting at 2.7 battle rating and 3.0. Coming after the P400, these planes have a lot to offer. Now, what are the strengths in these planes? The NO and both the Q5, both of them have great offensive guns, although you do run with the 37mm which gives you a little bit of RNG, which is random sometimes and you do have to live with that, there is no other way about it. Both of the guns have plenty of smaller caliber guns that give you reliability in the guns. The 37 is just pure for explosions and for fun that way, but it can also be a little bit frustrating while aiming. But I would still consider them a strength. These planes are also quite fast. The speed in these planes is good, especially the NO is very fast, a little bit faster than the Q5. But all in all, they are both quite fast. The performance in the planes is great. You do have a good engine with a good power to weight ratio and a quite a sleek design, not a lot of drag. So. There is nice acceleration and energy retention in these planes and uh, at a 2.7 or 3.0 battle rating that is a nice thing to have. These planes are also quite durable, the guns are in front and the engine is actually behind the pilot. Now for head-ons and stuff like that, that can add some survivability. Uh, when planes are behind you and they're peppering you, uh, you don't still get a lot of engine damage. You do get some of course, just like you usually would get in head-ons. but all in all, I found this plane quite reliable and quite sturdy. There is weaknesses to this plane. Just like the P400, these planes also roll off center. And they do it in top speeds above 670. So that is really at the top end of your dives, uh, which these planes can really go fast in. But all in all, there's still a, a little bit of that to work with. When you go into the last part of your dive, you, you can have the uh, maneuvers uh, pull your plane off the target and that's unfortunate. Overall maneuverability isn't great and the big gun RNG is definitely a downside to this plane but as I said it is still a strength in my eyes but that is the downside to those guns. The flight style in this plane. This plane can do boom and zooming, energy fighting and close air support. They have some ordnance that you can equip and the 37mm can be equipped with a ground target belt which can be uh, used for ground attacking. Boom and zooming is uh, the way to go, but you can transition between energy fighting and boom and zooming, which is quite nice. Is this plane competitive? Yes, at a 2.7 and 3.0 battle rating, both of these planes are very competitive. 
and are just great for the for their battle rating. You can wreak havoc amongst your enemies, although it does face stiff competition uh, competition in um, up tiers. So you have to keep that in mind and watch what you got for uh, the matchmaker. Is there a, what is the fun factor in these planes? Um, well, I would say medium to low, depending on how good you are with the guns. Uh, for me personally it is medium because sometimes the guns do give me frustration but when you are particularly bad at aiming and and then you have the RNG of the 37s added to that it can be low for you for the fun factor so keep that in mind it, it is really an acquired taste uh, the, the Aero Cobras um, although they're quite good when you get used to them do I recommend these planes how high do you value them I would give them a medium recommendation uh, because of that RNG in the guns. Now the flight performance and the flying in them is quite fun and quite reliable and as I said they're quite sturdy and they have nice speeds and they have plenty of armament and you can use them also for close air support they can throw bombs and stuff like that but all in all that RNG in the gun can give you a lot of frustration that uh, can take the fun away for a lot of people so you have to take that into account for this plane. It might suit your needs and it might be great for you. Your fun factor might actually be high in it. But for many people it might also be a little bit of a mixed bag. That's why I give it a medium recommendation from me. The Lightnings. We have Lightnings P38s. They are absolutely fantastic in their looks, aren't they? Very specific design which I quite, quite like. I think they're beautiful. We have the P38E and the P38G1. They sit here in a little folder coming after the Cobras, the Aero Cobras. We have them here, the E and the G1. 3.0 and 3.3 battle rating. Very nice battle ratings for these early lightnings. They give you a little bit of armor protection for the pilot, which is always nice for pilot protection, survivability. We do have the fuel tanks here all situated in the wing bases inside of the engines. Engines here being 1300 horsepower which is quite nice. Two of them of course which is nice. And then you have four 50 cals and one 20 millimeter right here in the middle. Very centralized firepower. Uh, actually a beam of death if you want to look at it that way. Now. For bomb loads you only have a few rockets in the G1 and in this one the E you do not have any rockets but uh, both planes are fantastic. I would not take the rockets if I was you and uh, all in all both of these planes are very very good at their battle rating. Let's have a look at these two beauties. The early lightnings are absolutely fantastic. The P-38s we have two of them in rank 2 Americans the last two planes in the main the first main fighter line of the american line they're sitting at 3.0 and 3.3 battle rating the p38 e1 and the p38 or the p38 e actually and the p38 g1 both planes are fantastic the p38 g1 has better engines and thus is better in the climb rate is faster and turns better but both planes are absolutely great at their battle ratings. Now what are the strengths in these lightnings next to the fantastic look of these planes? Fantastic. I love these out of the box ideas about planes. This plane is fantastic when in the looks. One of the best looking planes in the game. That's a, that's a strength, right? <laughs> the offensive guns are of course a strength. Both planes run with a 20mm and 450 cals in the nose. Very centralized firepower. Fantastic. The speed in these planes is great, although there is more drag, but uh, the planes are fast. The high altitude performance in these planes is great. They do better than some of the other planes at the higher altitudes in rank 2, and that is just uh, a nice thing to have. The planes are interceptors, both of them, so they do get an air start, and with their good climb rates, um, well, good, reasonable, they're not in the strings, but with the air start, and the climb rate that the planes have, you get you are, you just are one of the, the highest planes always, which is fantastic for positioning. Durability in this plane is great, they can take a lot of damage, which is a, a great advantage. And with those guns, the ammo load is also great. So there's a lot of strengths to this plane. There's also weaknesses though. 
it does rip in steep dives. Um, the dive performance in that sense is not great. It does compress a little bit and the wings uh, tend to rip a little bit when you go steep down with the nose to the ground. Overall maneuverability is not fantastic. There's a lot of planes that can outmaneuver you, so you have to take that into account. This is a boom and zoomer and an energy fighter. And she's great at that, but she's not uh, a turn fighter. Uh, she's also a big target, which is easy to hit. And although it can take a lot of damage, she is larger than most of your other planes that you know. So uh, for planes, it is more easy to hit. The flight style in this plane is energy fighting and boom and zooming. As he does have some downsides in the later ends of the dive, with those rips in the wings and stuff like that, you can make small boom and zoom dives in this plane, but you gotta pull out in time. Energy fighting though, he does is one of the best, especially the G1 is very powerful with the engines, and the E1 as well, by the way, but um, the G1 is just a little bit more powerful, and as, as energy fighters, they are in their, um, sweet spot. Boom and zooming though with short runs is also possible. Is this plane competitive? Uh, yes, they are both very competitive and they are both very much fun to fly and with the air start and the climb rate that they have you can basically always have a position of dominance to start uh, your match off in and when you have that position and it happens almost always this plane is absolutely fantastic. What is the fun factor in this plane? For me it's high to transition between energy fighting and a little bit of boom and zooming is always a lot of fun. I like that energy fighting is my favorite style with boom and zooming also a close second. I like turn fighting as well, but what am I talking about? Anyway, the fun factor in these planes are high, they're very strong. Do I recommend this plane? How high do I value it? Yes, my recommendation for this plane is high. It is fantastic to learn energy fighting in especially with the um, wing rip ability. You have to be a little bit careful, so it also teaches you some caution and some, some to, to throw some thoughts into your maneuvers. It is a great plane to learn stuff in. And, uh, well, with the firepower, it's a tight beam. Uh, if you're not great at aiming, you might miss all your shots. It can be a little bit frustrating for beginning pilots, but when you get aim down, especially with the 50 cals and the 20, combination is great and uh, it's it's just a fantastic plane to fly in so highly recommended these p38s the lightnings fantastic later versions are also great it's just an absolute beast of a plane that looks great as well gotta love them so uh, yeah we're looking at the p40s the warhawks who doesn't know these planes they're very famous around the world used by many air forces Along the way somewhere, they sit right here in the tree, starting in the second fighter line, the second main fighter line for the Americans. The E1 at 2.7 and the F10 also at 2.7. They could be made sitting in a little folder, but Gaijin hasn't done that yet for some reason. The armor protection in the P40s is quite decent, nice plates, quite a bit of protection for the pilot. Here we have the X-ray. We do have quite a bit of fuel oil cooling, the engine right here. Then we have the classic American uh, setup with the uh, 350 cals in each wings. Quite a bit of sparring in the, in the wing here, quite uh, sturdy wings I would say then because of that. Engine in the front, 1400 horsepower, quite nice power for this plane. And they have a few bomb loads that you can choose from which is always nice for options and if you want to play in different modes and all that jazz. So yeah man, the P40s are quite nice. Where's the other one here? Also a nice skin. Lovely planes, let's have a look at them. So we arrived at the P40s in the second main fighter line of the US. And these P40s are fantastic little planes. They are not the greatest at everything, but they're very solid jack of all trades that you can rely upon and uh, that is always a good thing to have they both sit at 2.7 battle rating you have the e1 that's the start of this line and then you get the f10 both of them are quite similar they have different engines the e1 has an allison and the f10 has a packard but um, the uh, e1's engine is slightly more powerful but still the performance in the f10 is better 
was faster, better climb rate. All in all, though, these planes are very similar. That's why I review them together here. The strength in these planes is uh, their speed at the better rating is quite nice. They're fast planes, especially in a dive. Quite nice to have. Durability, these planes are quite survivable and do very well taking damage. They also fly quite nice with some damage, so there is that. Very forgiving when it comes to that. The ammo loads in these planes are great and you have great flaps in these planes that are remarkable and you can use them pretty much all the time very difficult to rip off now you have 650 cals in this plane that's why i don't mention it as a strength too much because this is pretty basic for the american planes but uh, it's still quite decent firepower the weaknesses in this plane is the climb rate they do require side climbing they're just not too great in the vertical and you need to take a little bit of time to set them up. Overall maneuverability in these uh, planes are not fantastic. They cannot really turn fight. They're not great at that. It's a little bit better at high speed, but when you lose a little bit of speed, you, you immediately lose any maneuverability you might have. And then there's a problem. If you go too fast, you get compression and your ailerons will lock up and um, yeah, control stiffening, not fun. But um, yeah, so it's not great at that. Flight styles in these P40s is basically uh, a jack of all trades that is not fantastic at anything but does everything reasonably well. It's not a turn fighter, it's not a great boom and zoomer, it's not a great energy fighter, but it can energy fight a little bit, it can boom and zoom a little bit, and it can turn fight a little bit as well. It is not great at anything. I wouldn't really call it great at anything, but it's also not bad at anything. That is what you usually get when you call something a jack of all trades. So you can also do close air support by the way as he does both of them can be equipped with small bombs and so if you do want to take it into ground rb they are capable of that you do get some bombs and i guess in the lower ranks you uh at, with with the vehicles from the top you can do some damage with the 50 cals as well are these planes competitive i would say yes both of these p40s are competitive at their battle rating what is the fun factor in these planes I would give them a medium recommendation for the fun factor. They are limited, they are not great in any particular style, boom and zooming, turn fighting, energy fighting, close air support. They're not great at anything, so um, it's, it's not an excelling plane. But uh, she is reliable and she's sturdy, that's what you get in the P40s. How high do I value them? What is my recommendation? I give it a low recommendation as there is too many great planes in rank 2 Americas to waste too much time in the P40s. I know there's people who love P40s, I don't dislike them either, but they are not great. And some of the planes in rank 2 America are great. And I would recommend you to fly one of those planes over this plane, although getting the P40 experience while you're at it, it's not a bad thing to do. The P40s are great steady jack of all trades that nothing nothing bad about them nothing bad about them but anyway i give it a low recommendation because there's too much good stuff in rank 2 america the first mustang in the game the p51 what a fantastic looking plane isn't it with cannons as well the cannon stang as we call her sits at 3.3 .3 battle rating in the second main fighter line coming after the p40s uh, plane with a bit of armor protection, nice, this plate is actually thick by the way, which is nice. Here we go, we have the fuel tanks here underneath the pilot, quite nice, not too expensive. Massive guns of course, 20mm Hispanos with uh, quite a bit of ammo in there, so four of them, lovely. And we have the uh, Allison engine with also quite a bit of horsepower in here. Lovely looking plane. No uh, ground pounding options in this plane, so there is that you just have the fighter with the four cannons, and uh, it is what it is. Let's have a look. Ah yes, the first Mustang in the second main fighter line for the Americans. What a fantastic plane. The Mustangs are fantastic, P-51s. You, you just gotta experience this plane, this is absolutely fun. A 3.3 battle rating coming after the P40s 
and there is quite a few strings with this plane to go through. The offensive guns you are running with four 20mm cannons with a decent amount of ammo and that stopping power at this battle rating is just quite nice and you don't see that a lot so great guns. The speed in this plane is quite good. It's a fast plane, the Mustang needs to be wound up a little bit, it takes a little bit of time to set her up correctly but when you get her up to speed it is absolutely fantastic. The dive performance and the overall performance in this plane are also good and a definite strength at this battle rating. What a fantastic plane to fly in. The durability when it comes to that is also good. It feels like a quite sturdy plane that can take some damage. Um, you don't just die like that. Of course it happens with pilot snipes and ripped off wingtips and stuff like that but overall the durability in the Mustang is quite good. Weaknesses overall in this plane is the maneuverability. When she is fast she's got a decent turn or two in her but when you start to lose speed the maneuverability disappears. The climb rate is a uh, definitive weakness in this plane and she needs uh, some very dedicated uh, side climbing to get this plane in the right position. Then there is also overheating in this plane that you gotta take into account. She does overheat quite a bit and you need, need to keep your eye on that. It, uh, you need to manage that during the, the whole battle basically. The flight style in this plane is boom and zooming mainly. Mainly. Uh, it is very important to, uh, to do that well and to stay in your boom and zooming in a strict way. She can transition a little bit uh, as in the towards energy fighting but with those uh, four 20 millimeters with all the ammo it is uh, a little bit of a heavy plane and she's not the best when it comes to Mustangs yet when it comes to energy fighting. This plane is just purely boom and zooming. Is this plane competitive? I would say yes. The Mustang P51 is quite competitive at a 3.3 battle rating and she can do a lot of damage to the enemy team so um, there is that. The fun factor in this plane is high. The finishing, the stopping power with those four 20 millimeters is quite nice for the boom and zoom style. You do finish them off and, and that, is, that is fantastic to have. So that is fun. Uh, do I recommend this plane? How high do I value it? I give it a high recommendation. This plane is an absolute beast at this battle rating and is one of the highlights in rank 2 America. It is fantastic with those guns and the Mustang coming from altitude is great. Even this early model Mustangs is fantastic and is quite powerful with the stopping power going into the boom and zoom roll. You just need patience in this plane. You need to set her up correctly, take your time to side climb to get the position that this plane needs to shine. And then when you are in a boom and zoom situation where you are the highest plane, with the stopping power that this plane has, you can just wreak absolute havoc on this plane and you can just make just this plane alone at altitude is a guarantee that the enemy plane has not won yet and that is just absolutely fantastic. It's a great experience, don't miss out on the P-51 guys. Hey guys, we're looking at some Wildcats, we have the start of the naval fighter line right here. Two Wildcats, the F4F3 and the F4F4, 2.7 and 3.0 battle rating. The main difference between these two planes are the guns. One has 450 cals, the other one has 650 cals. They have a little bit of armor, nothing too crazy. These are very early planes in the American war effort. They weren't too great, but they relied on them. They had to do it because they didn't have anything else. The guns. Four guns this one, the other one has six fuel tanks here and we have the engine here, not the greatest engine. Let's see, they do have bomb lows that you can use and try to uh, use to your advantage. But um, yeah, naval fighters man, let's, uh, let's have a look at these Wildcats, what can they do? Ah, the Wildcats, the F4Fs, uh, fantastic start to the naval fighter line in American rank 2. There are two of these, the F4, F3, the F4, F4. They have the same engine, same performance, safe, same flight model. The only difference between these two is the extra two guns in the F4, F4. And that is also why that plane sits at a 3.0 battle rating and the F4, F3 sits at 2.7 battle rating. 
So there is that. Now, the strings in this plane is the dive speed to start off with. These planes uh, do great in a dive. They have a high top speed in a dive, which is nice. Their running speeds, the maximum speeds in a straight line are not great, but in a dive, yes, there is speed there. The turn time in these planes is also a definitive strength of these planes. They are turn fighters, they can maneuver quite well at this battle rating compared to some of the competition, most of the competition, and thus you can do great shenanigans with this plane in dogfights. Weaknesses though in this plane is a web that is broken, doesn't work, slows you down, so don't use that. Overheating, despite the fact that you don't use the web, there is still overheating in this plane and you will have to run it at 95% often to cool her down. And the fact that there is no clear exceptional characteristic to this plane. She is a little bit meh in many departments and um, yeah, that is just unfortunate. But uh, this is a plane that America started off with in the war and, and you can accept you can accept that, you can expect that. So, but it is a definite downside that this plane doesn't have any strong points that you can uh, move around or that you can fall back on. Now the flight style in this plane is uh, boom and zooming is something she can do. And she can also turn fight. And usually I say in these planes in a down tier you can boom and zoom. And in an up tier you can be a turn fighter. And then these planes can also be equipped, both of them, with two 100 pound bombs. So she can also fill the close air support role and you can take her into ground RB so when you're looking at that or in naval RB if you want she can be a versatile plane when it comes to modes uh, what you want to play ground RB, air RB, naval you can you can move around in this plane is she competitive? I would say yes but barely barely and you do have to take into account whether you're in an up tier and use it as a turn fighter or you're in a down tier and use it as a boom and zoomer Fun factor in this plane is medium because she just doesn't perform, she's a little bit underpowered and it can be quite unforgiving for beginning pilots. Um, difficult plane to fly when it comes to that, so yeah, be aware of that. Is she recommended for that reason and the reason that there is many other planes that are much, much better at the same battle rating as this plane. I would not recommend using this plane and so I would give it a low recommendation in rank to America. Man, I mean the two Corsairs, they sit at the same battle ratings, 2.7, 3.0, that is just unforgiving and that, that says something about the battle rating that uh, Gaijin gave to these planes. They should be probably 2.3, 2.7 or maybe even 2.0 and 2.3 or both of them 2.3 but make something of it but not 2.7 and 3.0. There's just too many other good planes to, you know, give this plane a good recommendation, a high recommendation at this battle rating. There's too many other good things to fly. Hey guys, we're coming around to the Corsairs now. The early Corsairs, they are both of them fantastic looking planes. Look at these things, man. I love them. Two Corsairs we have. They sit in a little folder here together. 2.7 for the A1 and 3.0 for the United States Marine Corps version. They are planes that are great for their battle rating they do have some bulletproof glass right here very sturdy planes by the way as well 650 cals in the wings little fuel tanks here and of course the big one here we have a massive radial engine here with over 2000 horsepower absolutely fantastic when it comes to power these planes able to equip something here we have for this one we have no options though that's, so that's something to keep in mind United States Marine Corps version doesn't have any ground pounding option and the 1A does but both nice skins that I both of them like anyway let's have a look at these two magnificent birds ah the Corsairs the planes that come after the Wildcats in the naval line for the Americans the uh, A4Us um, the 1A and the 1A United States Marine Corps these planes are fantastic, <laughs> 2.7 battle rating and 3.0 battle rating for the United States Marine Corps version. Absolutely fantastic planes, very strong for their battle rating and they can take up tiers easily as well. The strengths in these planes, the speed is absolutely fantastic. They are fast planes and the dive performance deserves a special mention. They're absolutely fantastic. The high speed handling 
and the high speed maneuverability are freaking awesome. These planes shine when they go fast. The ammo loads on the guns is fantastic as well, 650 cals with uh, quite a bit of ammo which is good. Performance engine, great, very powerful engine, 2200 horsepower, absolutely fantastic, at a 2.7 battle rating. 3.0 for the United States Marine Corps version, which is a little bit faster and is a little bit better in the turn time, a little bit few adjustments to it, very nice. Durability in the end is also uh, strength in the Corsairs, they can take a lot of damage, these planes. Uh, the weaknesses in these things are the climb rate they don't climb very well they do take uh, side climbing and you need to take a little bit of time for that because they don't end up as the highest plane when you fly straight into the enemy team so uh, be aware of that another weakness is the low speed maneuverability it's not great when she goes slow you need to be fast when it comes to overall maneuverability and the overheating is definitely an issue in these planes as well, although it is manageable, it does need a little bit of attention. The flight style in these Corsairs is boom and zooming, energy fighting and close air support. When you get them to altitude with their high speed handling and the top speed in a dive, they are absolutely made for boom and zooming, fantastic in that role but they can also energy fight and they have a lot of power underneath the cowling it's just great as energy fighters stall maneuvers when you have the energy finally worked up in this plane it is something to behold and very dangerous for the enemy team don't leave a high corsair alone Pri prioritize it as a target at these battle ratings because they are very dangerous with a good pilot in them they can also or at least not the United States Marine Corps version, but the 1A can do close air support. It can equip a 1000 pounder bomb as a maximum load. And that can be quite nice if you want to do that, basically, right? <laughs> I wouldn't advise it, but you can do that. Is it competitive? Yes, both of these Corsairs are highly competitive at their battle rating. They're very strong, very powerful, very powerful engine, very strong plane, sturdy, survivable, fantastic at high speeds. Yes, yes, very, very competitive what is the fun factor in these planes with the combinations of boom and zooming and energy fighting and the high speed maneuverability so when you do have speed you can actually surprise planes with uh, a couple of great turns uh, rolling is great at high speeds as well yes there can be uh, a lot of fun to be had in this plane a lot of shenanigans so uh, high fun factor do i recommend these corsairs how high do i value them i give them a high with an exclamation mark recommendation these planes are the best in rank 2 america the two corsairs are absolutely fabulous and although the p51 is great and the lightnings are great these two corsairs are absolutely superb and you cannot go to rank 2 america without flying these corsairs so yes i highly recommend them don't skip them have some corsair fun The start of the American attacker line, the TBF-1C torpedo bomber, dive bomber, however you want to call it. She may not look like much guys, but this plane has more to her than you might think at first sight. 1.7 battle rating, forward facing guns, turrets, bombs, hmm, bomber start. Nothing bad about this plane would say, huh? Let's look, we have quite a bit of armor for this plane, nice protection for the gunners as well and the pilot. Fuel tanks, quite nice actually, nicely spaced out, nothing too fancy into the wings, so that is that, that's good. The oil cooling and a powerful engine, 1600 horsepower, she needs that because it's a big plane of course. Here we have the 50 cals in the wings. You have offensive guns, I love that, I love that, that is just great to have. We have bomb loads, 500 pound bombs, torpedoes give you a little bit of versatility. When the, when the modes you want to play, you can go into naval as well, ground RB. Anyway guys, this is a little beast, let's have a look as to why. So attackers, here we go for the attacker line in rank 2 Americans, the TBF-1C Avenger. A very fun plane that you 
well i'm not saying what you have to do but this plane starts with a bomber spawn it's like a it has torpedoes it has bombs so it can be a dive bomber it can be a torpedo bomber but it gets a bomber spawn and from that position with uh, offensive guns this plane is a lot of fun now the strength in this plane at 1.7 battle rating that's another strength of this plane that battle rating man wow but the strings in this plane are the bomb loads, four 500 pound bombs or a torpedoes giving you options in ground RB, air RB and in naval, which is interesting. So it gives you a lot of options for modes. The offensive guns, 250 cals early on, 1.7 battle rating with 250 cals is quite nice actually. The turn time in this plane for a bomber is actually quite entertaining, she's quite maneuverable, so that is good and the turrets are quite nice as well you have a 50 cal turret and a, a smaller caliber turret two turrets towards the back which is quite acceptable now she's also quite versatile as i said for what you can do with it you can bomb you can close air support you can be a support fighter you can go in all kinds of modes so she's very versatile weaknesses in this plane are there though the performance she doesn't have a great engine on her so she is not very accelerating or energy retention or all that stuff so doesn't have the performance she doesn't have a good climb rate unfortunately roll rate isn't great either and there is overheating in this plane so you sometimes will need to cool it off a little bit to uh, keep it functioning correctly the flight style in this plane as i said is very versatile you can use it as a base bomber with those 500 pound bombs four of them you can do close air support with that role as well and you can use this plane very well as a support fighter once you throw off the bombs on a base you can wreak havoc uh, amongst climbing fighters and stuff like that you get an air spawn and particularly in down tiers this plane is very effective but with the battle rating the up tiers to 2.7 are quite a bit more competitive with corsairs coming into the mix and stuff like that but she's still quite nice with that high spawn so there's a lot of fun to be had in this plane is she competitive yes i would definitely say she's competitive with the versatility of the plane durability the bomb loads the offensive guns you can do a lot and uh, she's competitive is there what kind of fun factor does this plane have i would say the fun factor in this plane is high there is so much fun to be had in this plane after you throw off the bombs you can have a lot of shenanigans in this plane go after bombers or go after climbing fighters it is a lot of fun do i recommend this plane how high do i value her i give this plane a high recommendation this is one of the best bomber slash attackers in the american rank 2 for its battle rating it is very strong and it is also a lot of fun so uh, yeah this plane is very all-round and uh, very enjoyable to fly indeed so here we are looking at another mustang the a36 this time she comes after the adventure in the american attacker line 3.0 battle rating here she sits it's a strike aircraft she gets a low uh, air start but still an air start it is she doesn't climb very well though so there is that we do have some armor protection on this Mustang which is alright and here we have the same fuel tank loadout with the engine and uh, guns in the wings but we also have guns in the cowling here in the bottom and we have gun pots which is the main attraction to this plane she does have some bomb loads nothing too fancy as you can see but we do have these gun pots which will give you a plane with an air start and then 10 50 cals which is better than a thunderbolt which might become quite enticing for people to play with it is a plane that is a little bit of a mixed bag for me though and let's have a look at her to see why we have arrived at the a36 and it is a grand plane as an attacker it is a mustang in disguise and um you run with the same engine as the P-51, slightly po more powerful one, but only slightly. And it doesn't compensate for the drag of the gun ports, which are the main attraction to this plane. Now this plane sits at 3.0, coming after the Avenger in the attacker line. 3.0 battle rating. What are the strengths in this plane? Well, the speed is one to mention. It, although the drag of the gun ports, which you basically always take, otherwise why would you fly the A-36 over the P-51? But um, the speed is still good, 
and you have offensive guns 10 50 cals it's very good with quite a bit of ammo so that is that is awesome the gun pods as i said are the main attraction gives you four extra 50 cals which is nice durability in this plane is good it's quite a sturdy plane most things are solid and the dive performance in this plane the handling in the dive is great and it's definitely something you should uh, use in this plane a little bit of side climbing she does get an attacker spawn not the highest one but still it is uh, quite effective when it comes to that although the, with the, the gun pods installed you do not quite get the same climb rate as the p51 gave you so the air start doesn't quite compensate in the end and especially during the fight when you get further along the fight doesn't really uh, give you better climb rate or anything or better uh, it gives you a little bit of a better starting position but that's it weaknesses in this plane the maneuverability in the plane is not great she uh, is hampered also by the gun pods which really uh, slow it down in the roll rate and stuff like uh, like that as well and in the speed acceleration and stuff like that it's all a little bit less overheating in the plane is present so you got to manage that a little bit and then you have climb rate that you got to worry about a flight style in this plane uh, is a close air support uh, fighter and you can use it for that it has 100 kilo bombs uh, 250 and 500 pounds no sorry not kilo pounds and it can boom and zoom with the gun pods as a very effective finisher so there is that to 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 um, work with that is nice and close air support yeah only if you want it i would definitely see the gun pods as the main attraction in this plane which make it uh, very interesting 10 50 cals but as an attacker there is better planes out there is, you, is the plane competitive i would say yes definitely with the gun pods uh, the air start it can definitely get to a position with a little bit of side climbing that it can boom and zoom and the 10 50 cals give you uh, quite a bit of results and so yeah what is the fun factor in this plane i would say medium um, it is a mustang and uh, with the um, gun pods the, the, the rolls that this plane can fly is quite limited becomes a, a little bit less good of a flyer and a little bit less a more reliant on its, its firepower do i recommend this plane how high do i value her I would give this plane a medium recommendation as I prefer to fly the P51 in all cases and the gun pods are a nice uh, thingy to have, nice thingy to try out with 1050 cals but uh, after the newness of that rubs off then you know the extra maneuverability, the extra performance in the P51 just wins and why would you then fly this plane so yeah medium recommendation. Try it out for the gun pods I would say 1050 cals is fun to, uh, to experience a little bit. The Havoc is the last plane in the attacker line for the Americans. Here she sits, the A20G 3.0 battle rating coming after the Mustang right there. It is a big plane, it is a heavy plane, but she's quite famous in War Thunder. It is a plane that has been around for a long time and thus she's made a name for herself. A lot of armor plating here, which is nice can make a little bit of a difference fuel tanks around the wings they don't they aren't everywhere so that it doesn't cause too many fires you have two powerful engines which is quite nice options for bombs four times 500 pounders rockets you have forward facing guns six of them right here centralized firepower and you have a couple of turrets that can do you well she's also quite fast so this is an interesting plane to play with. Ah, the Havoc, the A20 G25 is a plane that is uh, very old in this game and I have some good memories from when I started this uh, War Thunder thing as a very sturdy plane with a lot of forward facing guns that could throw bombs as well. Very nice memories to this plane. That's just a personal thing. It, it, it is actually not that great but it, it, it serves a function, right? Uh, last plane in the attacker line in rank 2, the 3.0 battle rating in this plane. What are the strengths? You have uh, 6 offensive 50 cals in the nose, very centralized firepower, which is actually very nice to have on board. The speed in this plane is quite decent for an attacker for such a big plane. It has two powerful engines and it, yeah, it's quite nice in the speed department. Don't move too much though because it does bleed speed, but uh, the speed is uh, is nice. Bomb loads are also nice, not very 
wide and, and, and diverse, but you have four or 500 pound bombs, or you can take 12 H VAR uh, rockets, which is very nice for ground pounding. So yeah, I, I like those loads. It, it serves the function, right? For, uh, for a close air support fighter. Are there any weaknesses in this plane? The climb rate is absolutely very bad, not great at all. So from the air spawn that you get, you cannot climb very much uh, further, <laughs> unfortunately. Probably putting it in a dive, getting the speed and then run your bombs and try to get back, try to get a head on with some people, might be just the thing to do in this plane. Maneuverability is not great at all. This plane doesn't maneuver very well and you will have problems uh, when you get into a dogfight. You do have turret, uh, a turret um, in the back to, to work with, so that's good. It's a double 50 cal, so, so there is something there. You have another uh, shooter uh, below. So um, yeah, there, there is some turrets, which is all right, but uh, all in all, um, yeah, you, you, you don't want to use them too much, actually. Uh, compression is also a thing in this plane. If you go too fast, uh, you do compress also in the elevator, so you, you've got to be careful, otherwise you will splash, and uh, nobody wants to splash a plane. What are the flight styles in this plane? Well, it is a close air support uh, plane, of course. Great as an attacker ro a role. Um, with the, the rockets is, is uh, very nice as well. 12 HVAR rockets is, is uh, quite cool. Six shots. Um, you are, can also uh, be a support fighter, which uh, she functioned at as well, only she's not that maneuverable. Uh, turret is usable, but uh, all in all, uh, you need to be coming from the fringes after you throw your bombs or shoot off your missiles, or your missiles, your rockets, and then she can, you know, you can help people out who are under attack. Is she competitive? Yes, I would say she is competitive, but barely. In up tiers, it's really a pain with the maneuverability, and all in all, um, She's not maneuverable enough to be very functional as a support fighter, so there is that. But still, she would she she's competitive. I think she's she's good enough. She has some nice features to work with. Oh, the fun factor overall is medium. Um, you know, there's also frustration in this plane with the compression, with the maneuverability, with planes coming on your tail. That can be frustrating as well. So only a medium recommendation when it comes to fun. Uh, what is my recommendation as to flying this plane, uh, looking at this whole tree, uh, my recommendation for this plane is low. This plane is just not good enough compared to some of the other flyers. Why would you fly this plane compared to some of the other stuff you have flying around in this tree? There's better planes out there for bombing, there's better planes out there as a fighter or a support fighter. The A36 for example is much better as a support fighter. And the, the Avenger is nicer as a bomber, so yeah, I wouldn't fly this plane personally. So guys, we have arrived at the bomber line and the first one is not the least one, at least. Here we go for the Mariner 2.0 battle rating, starting right here, which is fantastic battle rating, right, for this plane, 2.0. Nothing terrible about it. There's no armor protection on this plane, but let's not be fooled. This plane is a beast and can soak a ton of damage, despite the lack of armor protection on it. So there is that. You have the fuel tanks here in the bottom and two there, but all in all, I haven't seen it cause too many damning fires and you have also fires that you can survive. So there is that, that is a nice thing to have. You do have the engines here, decent engines. You have gunners, 50 cal gunners right here in the back as well, all 50 cal, which is quite good for a 2.0 battle rating when you look at those gunners. There is that, no offensive guns in this one. But uh, you can't have it all, right? Bomb loads are very good for its battle rating. 500 pounders, 1000 pounder combination and the four 1000 pound bombs to start off with. This is excellent bomb load. So let's have a look at this beauty. And here we have the Mariner, the PBM-1 2.0 battle rating. First plane in the American rank 2 bomber line. This thing is absolutely fun, man. This is such a fun plane to fly. It has a lot of strings in there. It doesn't have much armor, but it has a lot of protection in there. 
she feels quite sturdy. She has a, a lot of uh, turrets that are good. She's quite maneuverable for such a big plane. This is an absolute gunship that is very fun to fly. Now, what are the strengths in this plane? Maneuverability is one. For a bomber, this large, this plane can definitely do some maneuvers. And that is fun because once in gunner view, you can, uh, while maneuvering, you can do a lot of shenanigans trying to uh, get the enemy plane with this amount of gunners. The turrets are strength, a 2.0 battle rating, 550 cal turrets. That is absolutely amazing. It doesn't have full coverage, especially from below, but um, it still has very decent cover. And with the maneuverability, you can move your cover while you're flying in uh, a gunnery view. The bomb loads are good. You have quite a variety of bomb loads, which are nice along the way to the top load of four. 1000 pound bombs which is quite good for a 2.0 plane so yeah all in all you also then have the durability as i said it doesn't have any armor protection but it has uh, an amazing ability to soak up damage it is really a gunship and you can take a shit ton of damage before she really gives up if you're in the neighborhood of your base and you are completely blacked out you can still manage to get there if you're not too far away of course you will eventually die if you're too far away but yeah there is that now the the weaknesses in this plane the speed this is definitely the slowest bomber out there it is very slow there's not many bombers with this slow pace but uh, it is what it is you just have to deal with it and be patient as you go to your first base compression is an issue in this plane when you go into a maneuver and you you go in a downwards loop you have to be careful with your speed because if especially if you're lower to the ground because it does compress now the overall performance of the engines and stuff like that isn't great and there is overheating in this plane as well when you use web a lot so be aware of that now the flight style in this plane is uh, base bombing and gun shipping those two things you can do with a lot of fun you usually will get to your first base especially in down tiers and at their own battle rating in up tiers sometimes it's a little bit more difficult but usually you'll get to the base and you'll be fine but once you throw off the bombs uh, you can have fun gun shipping usually with the 550 cals i wouldn't go gun shipping maybe in an up tier to 3.0 but in at her own battle rating or in down tiers she can be a great gunship that can make a difference in the fight is she competitive? Yes, the Mariner is definitely competitive. She has great guns, great bomb loads and great survivability at her battle rating. And uh, the maneuverability is also fantastic. So there is a lot of uh, pros to this uh, plane. The fun factor for me is also high with the gun shipping that increases the fun that you can have in this plane. And you can have great fights, even if you don't win them all, you can have great fights in this plane with, uh, with planes fighters attackers anything do i recommend this plane how highly do i value her yes i highly recommend this plane if you like bombing then you definitely have to visit the mariner this plane is such a beast at this battle rating have to visit her and get the full experience here we go for the b34 one of the best bombers in the game compared to its battle rating she sits right here coming after the mariner 3.3 battle rating she, they call her a torpedo bomber uh, but she can do a lot a lot more she has some armor protection nothing too fancy doesn't really help out there you have the fuel tanks here in the wings a little spaced out nothing terrible you also don't necessarily have to die from a fuel tank fire in this two powerful engines right here and they are powerful 1800 almost 1900 horsepower there which is quite good and we have the forward facing guns here you have a few turrets to the back this plane has it all it is very nice when it comes to that now bomb loads are no um, a great amount of bomb loads but it is what you need 250 pound bombs 500 and 250 combination and a torpedo basically all you need in a plane like this this plane can also function as a support fighter because of these forward facing guns Let's check her out. We're looking at the B-34 and the American bomber line just keeps getting better. Coming after the Mariner, this B-34 is an absolute beast at 3.3 battle rating 
and very fun to fly. It has offensive guns, it has decent bomb loads, it has a torpedo, it's sturdy, it's maneuverable. Did I say it has offensive guns? <laughs> it's fantastic. What are the strengths in this plane? The speed, the B-34 is a fast bomber at this battle rating and that is a strength, it makes you reach your targets so you can basically be guaranteed a base usually, throw off your bombs and then go after climbing fighters. That is usually what you will be able to do. The offensive guns are an absolute strength. Um, you have two 50 cals and two smaller calibers. Four guns, offensive. It almost feels like a fighter sometimes with which you can boom and zoom. It is very nice to have them. The turrets are actually quite good. Two dual turrets facing towards the back. One smaller caliber, one 50 cal is nice. Uh, durability in the plane is awesome. This plane can also take a lot of damage before she goes down. It can soak damage, that is good. The bomb loads are interesting and gives you options in the modes that it can fly, so that is good. And the climb rate in this plane is actually good. She's equipped with two good engines and she can take you even higher than the starting point, which is a nice quality. Now the weaknesses, there are some weaknesses. It does compress at high speed and it can cause you to uh, crash into the ground if you're not careful. So be aware of compression at a lot at a, when you get close to the red line um, also the roll rate is not the best it is of course a bomber in the end and that is one of its weaknesses uh, but for the rest this is an awesome plane the flight style in the b-34 is base bombing close air support and the role of support fighter you can do all three if you want you can go low and use the bomb load to go after a tank column you can stay high go after a base and then go into the support fighting role when you play ground battles you can do the uh, the cus roll and when you play an air RB I would advise you to take the base bombing and then support fighter roll which is uh, much more good for your health than uh, going after a tank column and then being low because that brings you into a vulnerable pos position compared to the fighters. Being up high and then going for them is uh, very much a fun thing to do in the B-34. Is this plane competitive? Yes, absolutely. She's very competitive. Forward facing guns, great bomb loads, nice turrets, all good. What is the fun factor in this plane? There is a high fun factor in this plane. She's very versatile and, uh, you know, transitioning between going after fighters, throwing off your bombs and uh, just having all around fun is great in this plane. How high do I value this plane? Do I recommend her? Yes, I highly recommend this plane. This is a great bomber. The bomber line in rank 2 America is great in any case, by the way. The, all three bombers are good, starting with the Mariner. Then this B-34 is absolutely great, very maneuverable, very sturdy. Forward facing guns, lovely plane. I love the B-34. It's an absolute beast at her battle rating. And then finally we arrive at the B-25, a very famous iconic bomber from the Second World War. Of course, they're all known, but this one is very much known, very famous. A plane that has a lot of armor protection, especially for the pilots here, also for the gunner, some, some stuff there, some plates, which is quite nice. Very big fuel tanks here in the wings. So that is a little bit of a downside, not, not much spacing between them, so you can catch fires there. Powerful engines right here, but it needs it. It's a little bit of a bigger bird, of course. And you have the turrets, you have double turrets, you have single turrets. There is a lot of stuff to be had. Forward facing guns as well, by the way, 550 cals. Very nice to have in a bomber, forward facing guns. You have a lot of bomb loads, but comparatively to the other bombers in this line, it aren't the greatest bomb loads, but still you have quite a bit to choose from as you run this plane. All in all, an interesting plane that looks very good. Let's have a look. So the B-25J1, the last bomber in rank 2 America, is a great bomber, but it is not as good compared to its battle rating as the previous two, which were just fantastic. This one is just good. It is not as fantastic and we'll get into the why later also in the conclusion but let's see what this plane has to offer. The strings in the B-25 4.0 battle rating are first of all the offensive guns. This plane has 5 forward facing 50 cals, 
and that is almost as much as the usual American fighter setup with 650 cals. This one has them centralized though, so that's a little better than 3 and 3 in the wings, in my opinion. It d it's not as maneuverable. This is a little bit of a bigger, less maneuverable bomber though, and it is more difficult to get the guns on target and to keep them on target. So there is that, but it's still nice to have them. The bomb loads in this plane are decent to good, but if you compare them, for example, to the Mariner, that one has four 1,000 pounders as a main load, and this one has three 1,000 pounders as a main load. So the 2.0 bomber has a better bomb load and load than the B-25. This one has more options, though, along the way, so there is something to say about that as well for column attacking, for example. The turrets are also nice. You have two double 50 cal turrets and three single 50 cal turrets that is quite all right this plane is nicely armed and uh, quite sturdy as well now weaknesses in this plane is the climb rate he doesn't climb especially not with the bomb loads it's just uh, not a lot of climb rate in there so you have to be aware of that and the maneuverability is also not as great as the mariner and the b-34 for example so uh, you can do less shenanigans with this plane when it comes to facing enemy fighters and you're usually also not at an altitude that you're safe from enemy fighters so you're usually in the mix of them and you might want to try a more conservative role just wait longer fly more to the side and wait until the enemies uh, have been pulled down a little bit now the flight style in this plane is a base bombing close air support and support fighter you still have all those guns, so you can do some support fighting, but it, although it is more dangerous and you can do less, but she can fulfill that role and close air support is possible with the smaller bomb loads, base bombing with uh, 3,000 pounders. The competitiveness of this plane is there, she is definitely competitive, she does have enough to offer to say yes, at 4.0 she has a role to play, but she's less fantastic than the other two bombers, but still competitive. What is the fun factor in this plane? I would say medium. There is more pain to be had in the B-25 at this better rating. You cannot outclimb your enemy fighters. They get too good. And the firepower in the enemy fighters also is increased. And even though this plane has more guns than some of the other planes in the bomber line in this rank, it is less fun than the others. Do I recommend this plane? How high do I value it? I would also say medium. It is still a good bomber and it can, you know, pull its own, hold its own at a 4.0 battle rating. But it's not as outstanding as the other two bombers in this line. And um, thus it is, it is less desirable. You are much better off staying in the B-34 for example. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in the conclusion. But the, the bomber line is great, the B-25 stands on its own, is still quite good enough. But... Um, yeah, I just don't like it as much. So I'll give it a medium recommendation. Hey guys, you have reached the guide and tip section of this video. And here I will take you through the best grind lines. Which plane should you skip and which one should you move to ASAP? It is also still a little bit of a personal choice, but at least we'll take you through a fighter pilot's decision and a bomber pilot's decision and uh, we'll see where we end up. Now, the best plane to start with, without question, is the P400 at a 2.0 battle rating. It is better than the Wildcats and the P40s on their battle rating. The P400 is not necessarily better than the P40s in performance, but it has a much lower battle rating, and there it performs very, very well. It is a beast at this battle rating. It's crazy. They lowered the battle rating. I have no clue why, but they did. It has a lot of armament. You know it. We went through the plane. This plane has plenty of performance there. Now, after that, there is three choices for you to make. Do you want to go to the Corsairs from the P400, the P51, or the Lightnings? The Lightnings are interceptor planes that get an air start, have good climb rate, and will be above the enemy planes always not the greatest in boom and zooming but excellent energy fighters they can make short boom and zoom runs fantastic firepower as well you have the p51 which is a great boom and zoomer that can also energy fight a little bit with great finishing power in the 420 millimeters or the corsairs which can do both energy fighting 
and boom and zooming fantastic at both but they have a little bit less stopping power with 650 cals in the wings there is choices there but both of these options all three of these options are very much worthwhile for a fighter pilot in the end personally i love the p38s but i would go for the corsairs in the end the 2.7 corsair here is absolutely amazing the united states marine corps version is also great but you could go for a p400 uh, 1a and that's it and then grind the whole line with that go to the united states marine corps version it's a little bit better a little bit faster a bit, little bit um just a, a little touch there that is better but all in all these lightnings are also great by the way the the g1 fantastic engines great climb rate always the highest plane amazing so there, there th those are the two options that i would highlight the p51 is also an option with the stopping power of the 20 millimeters is nice if you don't like the 50 cals now for the bomber pilots amongst us we have so many options that it's stellar <laughs> The Avenger is nice to start in, but the Mariner is great as well. Then you have an A36 with gun pots that is always good for shenanigans, 10-50 cals. You have a B34 that is great as well. Of course the A36 doesn't get the bomber spawn like these three planes, so there is that difference. I would skip the A20, it just doesn't compare to these three planes. And it, it, it is not much better or comparable to this one either it can throw bombs but i like the the apache more than the havoc and then in the end there is still the b25 that you could consider but these three planes here are the best of these six planes when it comes to bombing attacking throwing bombs and all that jazz the avenger with a 1.7 battle rating and two forward facing 50 cals with nice bomb loads and decent maneuverability for a bomber with a bomber start as well the mariner with its maneuverability and its 550 cals and its 4000 pound bombs at 2.0 battle rating is great and then the creme de la creme the b34 one of the best bombers at its battle rating quality battle rating comparison wise is this plane starts with a great air start four forward facing guns bomb loads very fast plane quite maneuverable with a good climb rate this plane is amazing so what i would do if i was a bomber pilot i would start in the avenger and then move to the b34 and you're done if you like big bombers and you like gun shipping in big flying boats which is quite nice to do actually i like that as well and enjoy it you could go for the mariner and then the b34 and then touch nothing else and just do that so yeah, that, that's it, man. And uh, talismans, also, these three are worthy of talismans. Absolutely, you could do that. Uh, talismans here, I would go for one of the Corsairs or one of the Lightnings, preferably the G1 or the um, either of these is fine. And you could consider the P51 if you want to spend money on a talisman. You could do that. Don't do it on the P31s or two uh, P31s, P39s. The Aero Cobras are nice planes and can definitely perform. Don't get me wrong, but comparatively towards these planes, they are just not as good, and they have the RNG of the 37 millimeter. It's a great plane for shenanigans and explosions, but it's just too RNG for me that 37 millimeter gun it gives me more frustration when i fly the p38s the Aero cobras the king cobras as well by the way but that comes for rank 3 p40s just not good enough compared to these other planes and the battle rating isn't enticing enough to fly a p40 instead of this corsair no man oh thank you very much or a 3.0 uh, p38e much better than these two planes so there's no reason to fly these p40s although there is nothing wrong with these p40s and then we go to the wildcats man 2.7 battle rating and 3.0 same battle ratings as these corsairs which are multitudes better than those uh, wildcats so yeah for the iconic historic mindset i would fly them a little bit maybe if you have time if you want to spend more time in these ranks but if you want to grind through them you can just unlock them and forget about them and go to uh, go to the corsairs go to the lightnings much much better experience and a much faster grind 
So that's it, guys. I hope this helps you out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, a like, a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment. And if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.